Hi, welcome back to another episode on my YouTube channel. I'm Hilary Mulek, a wedding photographer based in North and South Carolina. And this week's topic is all about how I actually design my client albums. I've made lots of videos in the past about albums, just where I order albums, just kind of briefly the programs that I use to design them and just that process of client albums in general. But I've had some feedback on people wanting to see an actual tutorial on how I use the program Smart Albums to design an album and how I send it to my clients to get feedback from them. And so I wanted to use this video to show you just that. All right, so I'm gonna pull up Smart Albums too pay no mind to my messy background. But this is what the uh, just kind of introductory page to Smart Albums 2 looks like after you have bought it and downloaded it. Over here are all my recent albums that I have created. These are the ones that have been approved by the clients. And then this is one that is still waiting for feedback. Today we are gonna be creating a new album. And I always have the album company preset and Miller's Lab, which is where I order my albums from, is already in here. So I have that selected. There's lots of different albums in here that you can choose from. Um, this is the album format and size that I wanna go with. I do a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12. Today we are gonna be doing a 12 by 12 and then I'm going to put Miller Signature albums in thick pages because those are generally the albums that I order for my clients. I'm gonna go to next. All templates I want included in this. You can add a border to your images if you want. I don't. And then this is just the default gap in between the images. Uh, I'm actually going to... Nope, I'll just keep it. And uh, let's click start. Now we are going to create a name for this album. I always like to start with the size of the album that I'm creating. And this is for Jessica and Keith's wedding. All right, it is being created and here we are. So this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop all of the images that the client has selected. So what I do is I have the client select their images in my pick time gallery. Most gallery services offer some sort of way for your clients to create a favorites list. And that's what I do with my clients within pick time. They just create a favorites list. I usually tell them to create around 120 to 150 images as favorites. This client created a little bit more because they want their album a little bit more image heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload those into this section. Okay, so here we are. We have all of the images that have been uploaded in here. Since this is a 12 by 12 album, I usually tell my clients that my 12 by 12 albums have 20 spreads in there. I might add a couple more if they just have a lot of favorites that they want to include. With my 10 by 10 albums, I usually do about 15 spreads. And for this first spread, I usually like to do a portrait as just kind of the introductory image to the album. So I've uploaded two images in here. Now I can look at different layout styles up here. If I want the images to match the timeline order, meaning this black and white image is first and this image is second, then here are some different options in here that you can cycle through. If you don't care about the order of the images and you're fine mixing them up, then it'll give you a bunch of options this way. I think I actually, I'm gonna take out this black and white and maybe put in this image. All right, so I've settled on this. I can always switch things around later. So this is what I like to do with my introductory page, just the very first spread in the album. And now I'm gonna go back up to the top and just kind of do timeline order from here on out. So here we have a bunch of bridal details as well as some images of the bride getting ready. We have some images of the groom getting ready. Uh, so I might do a spread each of those. Let's see. I 
I can go over here and kind of move this image around. I actually, I think I'm gonna take that out. There, I like that. Let's now include some images of the groom. Great. So, so far I have four spreads. I have this portrait spread at the front, just a detail in getting ready, some more portraits of the bride, some photos of the groom getting ready. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and speed through and uh, just design the rest of this album and then I'll show you the finished product. All right, so I have finished the album. I have 22 spreads on here and was able to use about 146 images uh, out of the 190 that they sent me. Now, like I said, this client had a lot of favorites, so I had a lot of options to choose from. Um, usually I try and keep it around 20 spreads. Since they did have so many favorite images, I did add a couple more spreads to this album since they went with the 12 by 12 and it's a bigger album. So I'm just gonna go through and show you just kind of how I construct constructed each of the spreads so you can see what the final product looks like. So you already saw this. The first spread is just a couple portraits from their portrait session. I'm actually going to click up here to get rid of this bottom part and that side part so you can see this a little bit better, bigger. So here is the bride getting ready, some portraits of her, and then I have the groom getting ready. Whoa. And then just some single portraits of him. Um, I can click on any of these and over here I can scale this in or you know move this around if i want to so that's really nice if i had a spread that was really image heavy i could come down here and click this bar to create one spread into two spreads so that's what that would look like i'm just going to undo that because i don't actually want to do that get rid of that bottom part Okay, so there's that. And then we have their first look with some portraits, more portraits. And then they actually did something unique and he did an outfit change. And so they did some portraits with outfit change and a couple photos with family. And then here is their wedding party. A spread of the groomsmen spread of the bridesmaids. Now, if I needed to uh, put spreads together, I could probably take out some of these bridesmaids pictures and some of the groomsmen pictures and make it into one spread if I needed to. That's a nice thing about just as you're designing this album and going through it spread by spread is you can always go back and readjust things. It This program makes it really easy to do that. So here's the bridesmaids and then I have some family portraits here that we did before the ceremony. And then here are just some highlighted moments during the ceremony, then their first kiss, and just them walking down the aisle. Sometimes I'll do the whole ceremony in one spread, depending on how many favorites they had. Here are just some more extended family photos. Now with family photos, I try and not make those spreads super image heavy because you wanna be able to see all the people. And then here's cocktail hour. So cocktail hour, more candid photos, like during reception, I will make those spreads more image heavy if they have a lot of favorites from that. Cause I feel like with these, you don't need to see these blown up quite as much as family photos or portraits. 
And then we have some of their favorites of the reception, some highlights of their first dance, as well as, as, well as some parent dances. These were just some portraits that I took them out for during sunset and then just some cute little candids of them uh, taking photos in front of their neon sign. And then here's where we get a little bit more image heavy, which I don't mind doing for reception. They have a lot of reception candidates they loved, a lot of dancing pictures, and these are ones that don't necessarily need to be super huge. So sometimes I will rearrange these. I'll bring this back. Um, so you can see this, but I can, you know, switch these if I want to switch those if I want to, um, with these sections that have bigger images, I can switch in moments that are maybe, I maybe want to be a little bit more highlighted. So such as the maid of honor giving her speech. So I gave her the bigger image slot. So those are some decisions that you can make while you are in the editing process. Here's one more reception, uh, more image he heavy, just lots of dancing pictures. And then this last one is just a couple photos of the bride and groom dancing on the dance floor at the end of the night and then their bubble exit. So all in all, I have 22 spreads. I'm gonna send this over to the couple. So what you will do is there's this little export button here and I can either export it for print or export it for cloud proofing. So when you sign up for Pixaloo Smart Albums 2, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Pixaloo, uh, it all, you, you pay for cloud proofing and this is how you're able to communicate with your client back and forth, which is super cool. So I'm gonna click that, upload as a new album, export it. And so what it's going to do is it's going to export this as an online album for the couple to be able to virtually look through and make comments on. And when they submit those comments back to me and I open up my smart albums application here again, I will get to see their comments and be able to easily make those changes. So all of our communication is through this, um, smart albums, cloud proofing system. So I'm going to click export. It's going to export the spreads. And then I can put the client's name and email here on the next page. I can put a little note to them if I need to, and then it'll send this to them in an email where they can review it and either make any changes or they can just accept the album to move forward with printing. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And when you're designing your next client album, I've been using this process for years and it's been super easy, super seamless when communicating back and forth with my clients on album design. So I hope it was helpful for you as well. If you have any other things in photography or business that you have questions about, I do offer some different mentoring sessions. One is a Q and A where we can just talk over video chat and you can just have a bunch of questions for me and I can show you, I can do a screen share and show you exactly how I do those things um, in my business or we can do something a little bit more in depth where if you live close to me in either North or South Carolina, we can meet up and do a multiple hour mentoring session where I'm showing you things more hands-on with either your business or with photography. So I will leave a link in, in the description so that you can look into that. If you have any questions about the tutorial that you just saw, you can leave those in the comment section down below and I will see you again next week for another YouTube episode. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.